Good evening, everyone, and welcome. I'm Joe Helbley, and I'm the Dean of the Thayer School of Engineering here at Dartmouth, and it's my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to Thayer School's inaugural Great Issues in Energy Symposium. With the launch of this symposium this evening, we're beginning a process where every spring, on a beautiful night just like this, because it's always beautiful in Hanover in early April, <laughs> you must be locals if you're laughing at that, we're going to devote a single evening to a single issue in the energy field. And tonight, for the inaugural symposium, we've chosen perhaps the most important energy challenge of all, that associated with climate change. Now, many of you know that that focus on a great issue reflects the general philosophy of the Thayer School of Engineering. As you came in this evening, you may have either come through the engineering school or come past the en entrance to the engineering school. And if you look closely, you will have seen carved in granite, literally on the sides of the building, the words, to prepare the most capable and faithful for the most responsible positions and the most difficult service. Those are words that are attributed to our founder, Sylvanus Thayer, from 1867. And they've reflected the philosophy of this school for 140 years, that engineering is about tackling big issues, teaching our students the skills to tackle big issues and make a difference in society. And certainly, students are responding to these challenges and responding to one of the greatest challenges of all in energy, the challenge of climate. Now, that's something that we're seeing by uh, the simple fact that there are increased numbers of students enrolling in our classes. And it's been particularly gratifying for us to see as the Thayer School has developed this focus on energy over the past two years, the student uh, response as a result. Our graduate student enrollments are up to, to record levels. Some right of there. you I see here in the room. Um, and even at the undergraduate level, we've noticed this winter and spring, our enrollments across the board are up 20 to 80% over where they were this time just a year ago. And we think in part that's because of the focus on the need for engineers and scientists to tackle big issues like energy. There was an article in the LA Times just a few days ago, just this past Sunday, saying very much the same thing, that anecdotally, engineering and science educators are seeing this across the board, across the country. And so I think that bodes very, very well as an encouraging sign for the future of our country. Here at Dartmouth, it's not, certainly not just engineers who are paying attention to this issue, it's the entire campus. Many of you may have passed a table just outside Cook Auditorium on your way in this evening. And if you did and stopped and talked to the students who were seated there, you will have learned that on April 15th, in just a few weeks, they'll be launching an energy awareness campaign here across the Dartmouth campus. And the goal of these students is through their actions to accelerate Dartmouth's progress towards reducing our CO2 emissions to a level 30% below emissions in 2005 by 2030, consistent with a pledge signed by Dartmouth President James Wright just last fall. Now, before I turn the podium over to um, Professor Lee Lind, who is the, uh, the motivating force behind this evening's event, um, I do need to make one um, simple uh, announcement and logistical details. Because we're recording this uh, event this evening, I've been asked to remind everyone in the audience to please turn off cell phones, pagers, if anyone still carries a pager, handhelds, and any other electronic devices. With that, it's my pleasure to introduce Professor Lee Lind of the Dartmouth Thayer School of Engineering, the Paul and Joan Quineau Professor of Environmental Engineering Design, and the driving force behind this evening's event. Lee? Well, I'd like to uh, add my welcome. It's awful gratifying when you organize an event like this to have people show up. So, um, when Joe and I began discussing the idea of a Great Issues in Energy uh, Symposium, it didn't take us long to pick climate for the first topic, and it didn't take us long to arrive at the idea that the two best speakers, the top of the list speakers we could imagine on the subject, were James Hansen and Jason Grumet. And so I'm truly delighted that through all the twists and turns of scheduling uh, and suspense even into airplane flights this morning, we're all actually here together as we imagined in the fall. So I'm absolutely thrilled to 
to, to be here. Let me give you a, a brief outline of what we're going to be doing this evening and then get on with the main events. So we're going to have approximately an hour of presentations first on the science of climate change and then on the policy implications, although you two are free to mix those topics as you wish. I'm not looking for segregation on that. Um, then we will have a very brief on the order of three to five minute period during which we rearrange a little bit of furniture. You're certainly invited to uh, stand up, stretch, say hi to your neighbor. Uh, I would frankly ask that um, we not have a mass exodus because that'll take 15 minutes to get everybody back and settle down. Uh, then we will go to a phase two, which will be a first a moderated discussion and then questions and answers from, uh, well, questions initiated by you, answers from uh, our speakers, and then finally we will have a reception next door uh, at the uh, Thayer School for those of you who'd like to continue in a less formal setting. I see, I pay no attention to the man behind the curtain as the Wizard of Oz says. <laughs> Very good, very good. So, uh, <laughs> all I can remember that I need to do further at this juncture, and I'll try to make up for anything I've forgotten later, I suppose, is to introduce James Hansen, and one could easily fill a very long introduction with uh, introducing Jim, one of the truly one of the world's leading climate scientists. Uh, Jim and Jason asked me both to, uh, both asked me to keep it short, and so I'm just going to say this. I see. <laughs> it, it's tough to get a professor to stop talking, but we'll see if it works here. <laughs> I see. <laughs> okay. Eric from the physics department just commented to me, this is what we would expect from physicists, but not from engineers. <laughs> Fair enough. In any case, I was starting to say that it is a really great pleasure and honor to introduce one of the world's leading climate scientists. But the thing to me that's most distinctive about James Hansen is that he is a, a thinker, but also a doer, and made a commitment a long time ago to uh, going beyond uh, the analysis of climate, but actually bringing awareness to the public uh, of the potential implications of climate uh, for uh, human well-being and engaging in the policy debates as well as the, uh, the science, the, the climate science. So with no further ado, in spite of the five-minute uh, addition, please welcome James Hansen. Thanks very much. I am a physicist. I'm not sure <laughs> what. what the, um, I do want to uh, emphasize the um, both the energy aspects and the intergenerational justice issue in discussing this uh, climate challenge. 